Nautilus dry docks again. And after a long hiatus uh, through the summer, um, which wasn't really a hiatus, but more so uh, forced work travel, uh, back in the shop. Going to have a bunch of projects to share with you, hopefully coming up in the near future, including uh, a static Nautilus build, a 148th scale skipjack. Uh, both of those are nearing completion. But I wanted to share with you uh, a quick model uh, overview. I just picked this up uh, from a gentleman down here in Florida. Uh, this is a 172nd scale HMK Creations permit kit. I uh, wanted to give you an overview of how the builder uh, built the kit up because I love showing different solutions uh, to the same problems that we all face. So let's take a look uh, at the model and uh, show you how it was put together. So 172nd scale, permit class, submarine from HMK Creations out of Alberta, Canada. Uh, let's take a look at this. It uh, has some beautiful scribing work um, all along the upper surface. We've got the periscopes uh, in there. Builder did a great job uh, putting this together. Obviously put a lot of care and attention uh, into the boat. Um, let me know, basically, these are just rattle can paints that he got from the local hardware store. Um, he also fabricated his own watertight cylinder uh, arrangement. And uh, it's pretty unique. And actually, I, I kind of like it. Let's start at the business end here. Um, we've got the motor compartment that kind of protrudes from the back there. We've got a planetary gearbox uh, tied up to the uh, motor there. Um, the one thing that I, you know, see quite a bit with people, um, when they get a leak, their first thought is to slather everything with RTV silicone. Uh, and that certainly works, but it's kind of a band-aid solution. But just kind of keep that in mind that it's always better to try and address the issue rather than cover it up. Um, these are compression fittings, and I've actually got some. I haven't used them very often, but I think I'm going to give it a shot because they're really inexpensive. They're about like $3 each, uh, and it allows you to adjust, or it did before it was covered in silicone, um, the compression on the shaft. So um, looking in the back here, we've got a pair of standard-sized um, servos. Uh, we've got uh, the antenna array wrapped up there. Uh, a Seeker 2 receiver, ADF pitch controller. We've got a uh, big electronic speed controller in there. So uh, a nice, neat little setup. Um, in the front is the ballast servo. And the, the neat thing about this, and I, I kind of like it, is that the entire cylinder arrangement is modular. So you can see we've got an output shaft in the back here. And that ties into this input shaft on the ballast tank. So by pushing the arm forwards, it depresses the valve of the copper pressure vessel and that blows propel into the ballast tank, blows ballast. Uh, by pulling on it, uh, it opens up this plunger here uh, and vents the air out of the cylinder. So it's actually a pretty slick, simple arrangement. And the neat thing about this um, you know, with RC submarines, typically you have a, a different sized ballast tank for every boat in order to get up to the perfect water line. Um, in this way, you could actually fabricate a number of custom cylinders, keep them in the boat, and then simply drop in your expensive um, electronics and drive module um, into each respective boat. So it's a pretty slick system. Um, and the last thing, of course, we've got the power leads going into the battery compartment at the front there. Uh, taking a look at the boat itself. Now, what I've elected to do, <clears throat> just because I'm familiar with it and it just so happens that it fits kind of perfectly. Um, I'm going to see if I can one-handedly take this off. Here we go. This is uh, one of our standard three and a half inch Subdriver modules uh, was specifically designed for the uh, skipjack submarine, but as you can see, it fits perfectly uh, in this boat. It's going to have uh, some more 
ballast capacity than the uh, version that came in there. You can see that there's quite a bit displaced by the copper pressure vessel. Um, so this is going to be a pump-based system, an air pump-based system, once it all gets in there. Um, I've just got it set in. There's a, a rod that sits in the bottom right there. And that goes into a little hole on the bottom here. So when you drop this in, it just uh, slips on over the top. I'll get a Velcro strap that holds it in place, and that is uh, all that's needed to install and remove the cylinder. Um, again, just a great job of installation of the control surfaces. Things get tight on the inside, and I don't know if we're going to be able to see in there, but that arm actually tapping against the main drive shaft. So this is as far to port as that'll go, but we've got enough deflection that we should get some decent steering response out of the boat. Uh, this is not a brass prop. This is actually a carbon fiber prop, so it's nice and light uh, and exceptionally strong. So I'm kind of excited to, uh, to get to this. It'll be a little while, unfortunately, because of all the other projects I've got going on. But um, a very slick boat, and again, what I wanted to do is just give you an overview of how other people tackle sort of the same problems that all of us as RC submariners face, uh, particularly this modular system, this modular setup for the cylinder. So there you have it, an overview of this HMK Creations 170 second scale permit RC submarine. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, my apologies for the lack of progress in videos over the course of the last few months. It has been a busy summer, but look for more coming up in the very near future. Thanks for joining me. Again, this is the RC Sub Guy, Bob Martin. Be sure to check out my website, nautilusdrydocks.com, for this and many other projects, information, resources, components, uh, and other stuff relating to the RC submarine world. Thanks for joining me. Catch you next time.